Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Well, hello, Thursday afternoon, 14th of December, a pleasure to be with you. Hello, I'm Juliette Sally and you're Nadine Blaney. I am, forget my name sometimes, <laughs> especially when we're all excited <laughs> what's yes. going on on market. Well, what a day. I mean, we're calling it the pivot party, the Powell pivot, so many things happening. 1.6% gain on the SIBO 200. Uh, the ASX 200 also up by about 1.6 points, nearly 120 points. And, you know, looking at my market map, Nadine, it oh. is just broad based buying. You've got these gold players, you've got lithium coming back, you've got tech, you've got real estate. Um, there's really not that many weak spots apart from a couple of the insurers. It's been a great day indeed. Yeah, and if we look sector-wise, I mean, all 11 sectors are higher today. The A REITs are actually the best performing right now. They're up by about 4% today, 6% for the past five days. Guess what? They're interest rate sensitive, mm. correct? Um, so look, interesting as well, some of the corporate stories going on underneath the hood, but we'll get there in just a minute. I mean, this Powell pivot. I was chatting with a former colleague, David Scott, who's now at City Index, and he was saying, you know what, there are perhaps a few hints that came in the weeks following the last mm. Fed meeting as well, when they started talking about financial conditions. Scotty, I hope you don't mind me saying. Um, but look, it, what we know is that we've got the dot plot, so we now have you know, an indication a, a of how many frame. cuts. Yeah. Um, whether or not, of course, dot plots are not set in stone, so whether or not that actually follows to quote unquote plan remains a question, but what we will now be likely hearing, because don't forget after these meetings, we get a whole parade of, of you know, Fed speakers mm. out. Yeah, questions about timing. Talk yeah, about timing. indeed, and just the market pricing. And I think really interesting as well in terms of what it means for our market too, because as we know, we're about six months behind, so it isn't likely that we're gonna see any cuts, but will we see no more hikes given as well that mixed data that we got, the mixed signal from the job starter, always so volatile. We saw the number of jobs created rise, but then so did the unemployment rate. And again, that comes down to, you know, the amount of people looking for jobs. Participation rate, uh, hours worked, underemployment. Uh, there was lots in that jobs report. And I do believe, Jules, you've made a, a bit of a view in our yes. afternoon newsletter yes, about that one. Yes, I did in terms of, uh, you know, just some of the things that we've heard from ver our very smart guests about what we can uh, see. And I know that uh, one of our friends, Deanna Messina as well from AMP, had a really interesting mm -hmm. note out there saying that she thinks actually the RBA could cut from June, which is not really consensus, but at least it's kind of indicating that we are probably done with the rate hiking too. Yeah, so you put all these little puzzles, puzzle pieces together, and I suppose sometimes you do get mixed signals. Uh, the yen higher, and we've seen Japan's market falling more than 1% at one stage through this Asian session. So yeah, we never want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but plenty to keep stock watchers happy today. Um, I'll talk about some small caps maybe a little bit later, but yeah, the REITs, the REITs looking uh, pretty sweet today. Indeed, the REITs are, as you said, a very, very strong session up by 4% from Stockland. Mervac is up by over 2%, GPT up by over 6%, Charter Hall there up by 12.7%. Mervac up by 2% and getting to the tech names. Block, the exception to the rule, really strong gains to be seen for Wise Tech Global for zero and no big surprise when you've got, you know, US markets mm. uh, really up around record highs. Um, and, you know, just such a, a strong narrative coming from the tech stocks this year. We had Adobe out overnight as well. Let's have a look at the metals and mining space. Um, Fortescue again, a record high there, $27.33, quite incredible. Uh, Newcrest is uh, no longer, but Newmont shares are up by some spectacular 5%, I think. So the gold stock's looking really, really good. Northern Star is up by about 7.8%, BHP and Rio. And uh, just looking at the telcos as well, some good moves there. Uh, Aussie Broadband up 1.3%. Now, corporate stories. So this one, I was caught off guard when I got on air for the small caps today. Juliet, I've had you know lots on, but Valpara mm. up by 42%. Takeover offer looks to be coming to fruition. Had a chat with Andrew Page from strawman.com, who was saying this is so indicative of where we are in the market right now for small companies. You know, quality companies, and he rates uh, Valpara as pretty quality. It's in the um, technology to identify breast cancers. And um, he was saying, look, um, clearly there's a lot of small caps that are very cheap out there right now. Even some quality small caps are very cheap out there right now. And this is an absolute endorsement of the fact that 
you know, um, others think that they're cheap as well. So he's just really excited about a lot of the opportunity that's out there, but really good for Volpar shareholders at making up a lot of lost ground there just in one day. Yeah, and I'm just looking at Pilbara as well, of course, up by almost 9%, that big rally that you've seen in lithium players. Uh, Sean, is it Cartwright from Anandara? Always uh -huh. calling that that is going to be a turnaround. He's been ahead of the game there and uh, certainly some big moves in in those players today. Yeah, Viva Energy, the ACCC said that it would not oppose plans by the petrol retailer to acquire its OTR group. And then Aurora, um, the bottle maker. I remember when this um, was announced, the Saver Glass business, it makes sort of high-end wine and liquor mm. bottles in the U.S. Well, it's now saying that earnings headwinds could hurt the outlook for its recent purchase and Illumina jumping yeah, on that. on that Western Australia mm -hmm. approval. So the WA government approving the company's five-year bauxite mining plans in the state's Jarrah Forest. You mentioned Fortescue just a short time ago. I put a little bit of a view, it wasn't a strong view, but it was more of a, hey, iron ore, what's up? Fortescue hitting a record high yesterday. Time to take profits. Kashi picked it as the stock of the day today. Here's what they had to say. At the moment, from the charting point of view, it is very overbought in the short term. So right. you wouldn't be chasing it here. Um, you know, if you're a trader, you'd be looking to, to even exit here. And um, look, I'm looking to, to pick more back up uh, on a dip. But longer term, you know, charting profile is very constructive. Um, you know, I think we've got the tailwind of, as I mentioned, the, the commodity okay. space, global growth. China will rebound next year. Yeah. Um, so look, for me, I couldn't say buying it here. Um, it's doing all the right things. Oh, Fortescue, what you'll see is one of the best performing companies in the entire country, yeah. um, which is remarkable considering even 10 years ago, uh, it was quite an established business and got into production. If I had to choose, I would choose BHP. Um, I think the complementation with the copper uh, shortfall that we'll likely see at the end of 2020s yep. uh, will be profound and, and BHP's Olympic Dam assets and infrastructure will see it, uh, I think, surpass all the other iron, iron ore majors in the country in terms of its performance. Oh. So, there you go, Fortescue Metals, mm. uh, hot topic. Um, let's find out what's hot in Henry Jennings' world. He's joining us for Marcus today. Oh, happy Christmas. You, you're hot. Hey, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> Love that hat. <laughs> Well, it gets it gets a yearly outing, so uh, it's due for this uh, this year. So, thanks for having me on. So you happen to be our advent calendar pick on the fourteenth yes. of December. While you're joining us now, are you? I mean, I've got to just ask you about this market enthusiasm on this yeah. Fed pivot. What what you know? What do you make of it? Uh, well, it's pretty good, isn't it? I think this is going to go down as a watershed moment for uh, certainly for the interest rate cycle. It is peak US rates. We are going to see those three rate cuts next year. I suspect the RBA will cut as well. That will be the next move, but it may be a little bit behind the curve. It was slow putting rates up, so it'll probably be slow putting rates down. So our market, which has been a massive underperformer compared to global markets, even Japan's up 23% this year. Spain, Greece, Italy, US. Uh, the only other market that has really languished has been uh, the UK, which again is made up a lot of mining and energy companies. So that's really kind of held us back. Having said that, I think BHP, Rio and Fortescue are all pretty much at all time highs. BHP, probably uh, if you add back the Woodside deal, then it would be at an all time high. So I've got to say, you know, I wrote this morning, cry havoc and let's slip the dogs of war. And we're up 120 odd points today. And I suspect that is going to continue. We have lagged uh, and interest rates have fallen a hell of a long way. You know, those 10 year yields, which were touching nearly 5% now down to 4.1%. And in the US, they've got a three in front of them. So, you know, that's going to drive our market. There's a lot of money as well, Nadine. Uh, hitting the market as well with dividend paychecks mm -hmm. uh, coming in before Christmas. So where that money is going to go when interest rates are coming down and the market is moving higher and higher, there could be a bit of FOMO as we go into Christmas. So uh, I'm quite positive about the index and uh, I think we may see in the first quarter of next year an all-time high in our market. 
It's been really great to hear all day how positive everyone is. I think I asked uh, Andrew Whelan where he saw pessimism and he was like, I don't, you know, I'm, wow. I'm optimistic. And I saw your piece today as well, Henry, that Santa is on his way. You've got your hat on. We mentioned that you're in the advent calendar talking zip, but you also like deep yellow. Where else are you sort of seeing some potential movements to, to add here? Um, well, unfortunately, with Zip, I, I did film that advent calendar thing back at 39 cents, and I think they're at 53 and a half at the moment, mm. so it's gone pretty well. So um, timing, as they say, is the key to comedy and all sorts of other things in the investment world. Um, I have added some deep yellow today. I also added uh, some more wee bit nano for a tech exposure. Uh, you know, we don't have a very big tech uh, uh, sector in our market. You've got wise tech and... Uh, and uh, zero, but then you kind of drop down quite dramatically. So I did add some wee bit nano. Also, interestingly, I put in uh, Regal as well today, RF1, which is the uh, the fund of funds, if you like, uh, where the Regal managers there do, uh, do play with their strategies. That one was trading at a discount to NTA. Regal, of course, one of the smartest fund managers around under Phil King, and also, uh, you know, it is that discount as well, but they're big investors in small caps. And we saw last night Russell 2000 really having a big move. And as you said, with Volpara today, that's mm. uh, that's always been a quality company on my sort of uh, radar uh, in terms of their technology. But it's taken a little while to come to fruition. This is an opportunistic bid. But we're also seeing Whisper as well under attack. And there are uh, a lot of M&A opportunities, I think, in the, uh, in the smaller end of the market because it is quite cheap in relationship to uh, the larger cap. So I think there's some uh, some good pickings out there and hopefully Regal will pick some of those. There are already probably shareholders in them. So I'm quite happy to jump on board RF1, which has had a better day today as well. Okay, so we know that next week will be quiet. Um, you know, we know that people <laughs> knock off on the 22nd and many won't return until around about the 8th. So yeah. as an investor, and we, we just like to get this out there for our viewers and our listeners, you know, how do you play it? I, I know that we're talking about Santa Claus Rally. I know that we're talking mm. about opportunities and small caps and beyond. But strategically, how do you sort of play this time of the year, Henry? Uh, well, we've been long since October in our strategy portfolio with ETFs with exposure to the U.S. Uh, and the Australian market here. I guess, you know, you just stay long and sing a song. But at this time of year, it's sing a carol more than a song. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you have to keep an eye on things. But I suspect, you know, with the deluge of money that we've got coming for dividends, the FOMO that we could have, the catch up that we have, you know, you, you can probably sleep relatively soundly now. There's no real major events on the horizon. Uh, let's hope not anyway, in terms of uh, black swan events to really stop things. I think you'll have to start having a bit of a reality check come the middle of January, because then we'll be heading into the reporting season. So uh, you're probably clear uh, from next week. And what tends to happen this time of year is that volumes do dry up, as you say, Nadine, and we do see the volume on the sell side probably dry up and people just retreat and not sell for the end of the year. The funds will want to push the index up to make their performance look better for the calendar year. And I suspect that will take us higher with, as I say, not much to worry about really until mid-January, where I suspect we'll all come back from the beach We'll all be grumpy. We'll all be looking at our portfolios what? going, cool, it's gone, it's gone pretty high. Um, and worrying about the results season, which is upcoming. Yeah. And of course, the uh, the RBA in February, which will then be rearing its ugly head. And of course, don't forget that the big event in January is going to be the Iowa caucus, which is the first time that we will start to get the US politics coming into play. So that's going to make 2024 pretty interesting year. Uh, in terms of the Trump versus Biden rematch. It's a bit like oh. Ali Fraser. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Uh, I'm just not going to think about that right now. I'm going to stay with the Christmas <laughs> I, I, cheer. I, I, and wish the you, queen. yeah, indeed, wish you a Merry Christmas. Thanks for wearing your hat for us as well, Henry, hey, Henry Jennings pleasure. from Marcus today. Let's have a look at the leaders and laggards yeah. in the okay. session. So um, I think we've touched upon some of them just by virtue of the sectors. Charter Hall, IGO was absolutely battered yesterday after that Cosmos review. 
Uh, even though it has seen its price target cut by some, the likes of Ken Accord Genuity to the tune of about 12.5%, I think it's just caught up in the enthusiasm, perhaps a little bit of, of give back after the selling yesterday. Yeah. How much uh, Webit Nano do you reckon Henry bought? It's up 10.5%. I was going to ask if the volatility <laughs> bothers him in that one, but I thought I'll save it for another day. Yeah, maybe he's just been snapping it up. All right, let's have a look at the laggards. Uh, QB Insurance, we mentioned a lot of the insurance under pressure. Metcash was ex-div, so that's behind its 3% fall. Uh, Aurora, we already touched on, then NIB and IAG, just adding to that theme of the insurers being the, the losers today. Yeah, I'll be very surprised if Valpara doesn't top this yes. list. There you go, 42%. Experience Co. has had a great week, up by 12%. And Veeam, that was mentioned on the small caps today by uh, Luke Winchester from Meriwether Capital. You'll have to go online, osbiz.com.au. Check out the small caps. You can find it up at Series, and then you can sort of scroll through to where you'd like to listen to that. And then some small uh, mining players under pressure today. Vanadium leading the decline there down 18%. Let's have a look at what is happening overnight because, you know, we're done with Powell now. Yeah. We had the pivot party. But the Bank of England, the ECB and Norges Bank, as well as the Swiss National Bank, come through with their rate decisions. I think it's always interesting to keep an eye on the U.S. jobless claims, but retail sales as well. I mean, the U.S. consumer is still relatively strong and Costco, of course, will fill in the color in that picture. Um, really interesting to read Costco's results. So look forward to that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, tomorrow here we've got the index rebalance, uh, China data coming through as well. And then that's looking really ahead to tomorrow night when we get US industrial production and some of those flash estimates of global PMIs. Yeah, we've got a couple sessions to get through before yeah. we get there. Um, this is a look at the session now that was. We've got uh, really good gains being seen for the SIBO Australia index. And you know what? Today's gains bring us week to date to a gain of two and a half percent. Not too shabby. Mm, indeed. All right. What a good day. A risk on rally right across. Uh, we'll be waiting to see what tomorrow brings. It is, of course, Fry Yay tomorrow. Fry Yay. It's also the Osbys Christmas party. It is. You're not invited, but we'll let you know how it goes <laughs> on Monday. Um, thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning. See you.